Here in North America, there are two camp craft writers that were like superstars in their field. Interestingly, the one that came latter was pretty much a student of the first. Now, the one who came out latter, we're talking about Horace Kephart, was, I would argue, a better writer. He put in more detail. Nesmic, on the other hand, he was about generalities. So both of them balance each other really well. You can learn a lot from both. Nesmic is most well known for his lightweight camping. Kephart, well, he's into just about all of it, but especially we're talking about hunting and camping. And when I say camping, I mean a little bit more heavyweight type camping versus Nesmic. Now, Horace Kephart certainly agreed with Nesmic. The more you know, the less you have to carry. And when you go out in the woods, though, you're supposed to be comfortable and you use your surroundings to make yourself comfortable. No need to rough it, right? So today, I thought we'd take a look at what started Horace Kephart on his journey, and that is the Nesmic Trio. We all have our favorite tools. And in this video, I don't mean to convey that this is the best, because honestly, it may not be the best for you and your area and what you live. But Nesmic, being a lightweight camper, going out on long treks, something like this worked out really well for him. There are some th things to keep in mind as we go along, though, to help you realize why he did the way he did. And it's the mythology. The mythology is what you need to take. That way, you can adapt it to your own personal circumstance. Because your circumstance may not be the same as mine, and certainly not the same as Nesmix. So, let's get into it. I want to give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon because without them, this channel and especially the podcast wouldn't exist. So thank you to those of you who give whatever you can on Patreon. Now, there is going to be a special video this month just for you guys. So thank you. I appreciate everything you guys do. And uh, let's get back to this. I figured we'd start off with the pocket knife. Everybody should carry a pocket knife, right? Now, Nesmic, he was a big fan of the moose pattern pocket knife. The moose pattern was a two-bladed pocket knife. You had one blade, which is a clip point, and the other blade is a spear point, right? So what are some benefits of the spear point and the clip point? The clip point is really good for slicing, and you can even fillet a fish with it. Uh, it's because of its point and how sharp of an angle it is. It's really good at piercing. Now, on the other hand, the spear point, that one is really good for more robust uses. You can use the spear point for making cuts that you wouldn't normally use with a clip point because the clip point kind of has a more uh, belly to it, whereas the spear point is very much straight. So if you're wanting to cut something that really needs a longer, straighter cut, then this is what's really good for it. Like cutting rope is a really good example. There are specific notches that are really easy to make with this type of, uh, of blade. And there's type of cuts that you can make on wood that are a lot easier with this type of blade. But also because of the point being a little bit more blunt, if you have to whittle out a hole, for example, or bore something out, this is a good tool for it. But just like all knife points, you gotta be careful because they can break off. That's what happened to my dad's uh, moose pocket knife. I still have his, but his tip of his uh, clip point is completely broken off. But use it until his dying day. Now you would use your smaller pocket knives for more of your day-to-day -day type carving and cutting tasks. Now if you need to cut rope really quick, well, any knife that's sharp can cut rope, right? So you don't need this. But if you are carving a particular tool, for example, like if we look at this tri-stick, for example, this is uh, what I take to my scouts to show them the different cuts of a tri-stick, it's a lot easier to make more definitive and more detailed cuts with the pocket knife than, say, your belt knife. Now, depending on what your belt knife is, knife is and the type of cut, then sure, you can cut a lot of notches with your belt knife. When you're talking about precision, this is the one to go, right? And the nice thing about the pocket knife is it's easy to keep in your pocket. It's very lightweight. You don't even really notice this even there. So if you want to leave behind something at your base camp, say your belt knife, then having this can still get you by on whatever you need to get done. 
Let's talk about the hatchet. Now this is Nexmus hatchet, and this is a, a recreation of it. I don't know exactly how 100% accurate it is, but based off of his drawing, I'd say it's pretty accurate as far as the length of the handle and the size of the head. Now, I've done a video on this. At the end of the video, I will show you the link to this one if you haven't seen it yet. But the nice thing about having a hatchet that's double bladed like this is one, you keep really, really sharp. That way you can do some heavier duty carving if you absolutely needed to. But mostly this is a cutting tool for things like firewood. Or, Nesmik was a hunter. When he goes out in the woods, he wasn't carrying around a whole lot of his meat. He was hunting for his meat, or fishing, or trapping for his meat. So having something like this, and if you get a deer, or another large game or medium game animal, and you need to split open the red rib cage, something like this works out really well. But cutting firewood, anything that's about the size of your wrist, and smaller is what Nesmik is going to use. He's not going to be making log cabins. His camps tend to be very temporary, and uh, he'd go from one place to the next place to the next place. So as you're going along, you don't want something that's going to be too permanent. You just want something that's going to get you by for a night or maybe a weekend. Uh, if you're bogged down because of foul weather, you know, foul weather is usually over in a day or two. So having something like this works out really, really well. Now, as I pointed out in the previous videos though, having a pole on your hammer, instead of having a two-headed hatchet, having a pole makes it really useful for hammering in stakes or hammering in traps and trap lines and things like that. So most people I don't think really have a need for a two-handed, I'm sorry, a two-headed hatchet, but it does work out really well. You have your splitting side and you have your cutting side. Now, before I show you this next thing, if you like this video, please click like. That way other people find it. You'll be doing them a favor. It helps them out. We really appreciate it. The next tool in Nesmik's trio was, well, his knife that carries his name, his style of knife. Now, in reality, this knife is really just a modification of a butcher knife, if you will, because it is a historical hunting knife. That's what it was for. That's exactly what it was designed for. So if we pull out Nesmik's knife, one of the key features of his is it had a, a antler handle and it's about five inches long. So you don't want anything that's longer than five inches. So it still cuts down on weight and still very useful. Now Nesmik's knife has a sweeping blade. I'm not gonna talk about this knife in a whole lot in this video because I'm gonna have a separate video just dedicated to the Nesmik knife. But having a belt knife like this when you're going hunting, it's very useful. Again, he's trying to find large game and you don't want to take down a bear or a, a white-tailed deer or an elk or something like that with this little guy here. You could if you had to in a pinch, but man, are you gonna get worn out? So the design of the Nesmic knife was specifically for butchering game. Now, if you're trying to make some of these smaller cuts with this type of knife, you could do it depending on how you use your knife, but it's not going to be as easy as, say, just taking out your pocket knife and going through with this. Everybody wants to have a one-size-fits-all knife, and it doesn't exist. So be smart, be methodical, especially when you're trying to decide on uh, how you, long you want to maintain your blades. You don't want to use the tool for anything different than what it's designed for. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time sharpening your knives and your tools or taking out nicks and things like that. So be smart in how you use your knife. Now, a nice thing about this knife is because of its shape, you can slice it, you can use it to skin animals, and it's a fairly decent kitchen knife, you know, utilitarian kitchen knife for prepping food. Because of its belly, it's kind of like a chopping knife. Now that is the Nesmik Trio. How does this differ from the Horace Kephart's Trio? Besides the shape and style of the knives themselves and the ax, Horace Kephart also believed in taking more than just these three tools. You know, this is known as the Nesmik Trio, and that's where it originated. Kephart had his own, but he also carried a few more tools, including a pruning saw. That's something that was in his book, Woodcraft. 
taking a small pruning saw, which many bushcrafters and campcrafters do. They're pretty lightweight, it doesn't take a whole lot, and they're pretty useful for making furniture and shelters and making quick tools, right? So having a pruning saw may be nice, but he also had a fishing knife or what's called a trout knife that he would carry, specifically for fishing. Because even though Horace Kephart's knife is really good for a lot of different things, because of how thick it is, because it's not a flat ground blade, having a trout knife, which is specifically designed for gutting and flaying a fish, makes things really easy. He understood that there isn't a utilitarian way. Now, if you had to though, if you're trying to cut weight, this is the way to go. You have your main jobs taken care of. You have chopping and splitting and cutting with your heavy duty hatchet. You have your hunting knife here, which can do pretty much anything that you need to. And if you need finer cuts, then you have your pocket knife. So this will take care of you out in the woods. You could get by with these three things. And the more you know, the less that you have to carry. Now, if you're interested in checking out pictures of these different things, then they're on my website, and a bunch of other links are below, including the links to my podcast and my new monthly newsletter. So make sure to sign up for that. That way you get uh, special articles and depth uh, and close pictures and things like that. If you wanna check out my video about the Horace Kephart trio, then check out this one here. If you're interested in my inspirational, motivational, religious videos, then check out this one here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss hug to your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.